Oh shit, I'm not on Twitch. Oh! Oh. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't had a chance to that up yet. <laughs> oh, oh no. We've been so busy doing... Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Doing kingdom administration. Ah. Thank you very much. I see, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing? Everybody enjoying their um, Wednesday morning slash Thursday evening or whatever it is over in, in uh, Australand? Austria land? It's hot. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, apparently, yeah, God, it's so funny because, like, today it's cold and rainy. Today it's, like, I, I want to say it's maybe, like, 50 degrees and, and rainy, and so it's kind of cold out. And for you, it's, like, 32 degrees and sweltering. And what do you mean? What do you mean, Tesh is one? One of what? That's so rude, Josh. I can't believe you'd say that. Can you believe you'd say that to, to you? That's what is he's doing it right now when I can't streamer? see. What do you mean, Tesh I actually is one? can't see yet. I, I don't even know what you're talking about. That doesn't even make any sense. Yeah, Josh, come on. <laughs> yeah, I think he's taking advantage of the fact that I can't see chat. Oh, I think I think I know what it is. It's because Jake was the first on the call instead of the last. Jake, you gotta flick your oh, camera. Oh, we're in the wrong place. Yeah, Jake, you gotta flick your camera, buddy. Everything's wrong when Jake. Uh, I'm the first. only one that doesn't need to flick my camera. Yeah, so so Mike, uh, not Mike. Wow, Neil, flick your camera. What? <laughs> so Neil, go That's now. Neil back offensive. on. Neil back on. <laughs> oh my God, man. And then Jake back on. There we go. Problem solved. Hi. It's been it's been it's been crazy up here in the Dillery house. Oh, that's not so weird to say. <laughs> in text, it makes sense, but saying out loud has a funny. Now you know how we feel about like everything you say. Oh, that's fair. That's <laughs> legit. That's legit. Oh, hello. I've seen Messi called you Rick. Do you like being called Rick? I like Rick. Should we all call you Rick? I like Rick. Rick's a cool guy. I like Rick, actually. Yeah. Rick's a really cool guy. I, I, I actually don't know Rick. Uh, did you watch any of the Witcher campaign? I did not, because I hadn't finished the game. And usually, like, you find or, Mass, no or, Mass, or Mass Effect campaign? Don't worry. It, it didn't oh. have it didn't have any spoilers, the Witcher one, because I was there having to be like, Scott, no, that's, that's not... That's not that's true! I had to read lots of stuff! I had so much reading to do. <laughs> I was like, learn the lore. All right, anyways, so, hi... Um, let's uh, let's kind of jump in with what happened last week. Lots of shit. All right, so um, this week you guys are um, <clears throat> kind of picking up, as always, more or less where we uh, where we left off last time. Um, you actually had a pretty su successful uh, endeavor last time. Uh, your efforts to uh, uh, let's just say liberate the peoples of Adir and we'll leave it that open. And vague for interpretation, because I know there's a lot of emotion about what that might have mean in chat. Hi, chat. How you doing? Uh, so you liberated the peoples of Adir um, uh, in one format or another. And um, uh, not entirely sure exactly how things are going down by Hot Gwen. But what you do know is approaching from the southeastern um, uh, border of Kurzfall, there was there's a bunch of people coming. Uh, and that one was something like... Uh, tell the men get to the post. Arm themselves. No, no, not men with swords and, and weapons. Not soldiers. Worse, much worse. What? Refugees. Oh God, that is not cool, dude. In the current social climate of our world, that is not cool. That that is that is the. And, and and in going with the social climate at the moment, one would still order get the men. Get the <laughs> men. Oh my <laughs> God! Oh dear. Build that Ooh. wall. Build it. Okay, we we, we do uh, have to build the wall. For having me, I'm gonna <laughs> like. <you. laughs> no, that's been the appropriate. We'll make Hod Gwen pay been. for it. No, uh, <laughs> in a way you will. Um, so you um, uh, uh, that's been the the, the go-to reaction for large sums of people approaching your uh, uh, nation for a very very long time, um, refugees or otherwise. So um. Yeah, it's, uh, the soldiers obviously panicked, freaked out, and you, um, uh, have Kithulls down by the, uh, down by, like, literally the area into Kurzfall that's trying to fix the situation. So imagine your characters who are all together and heard the scenario happening. Uh, do you all rush down together? Like, how do we approach? I imagine all of you literally go riding down there, like, go, stay. I issue the command to secure the border. Mm-hmm. Let's, well, I mean, it's... I will... Kithul's already down there. I'm saying, are you going to have this guy go running, or are you going to run down there to Kithul yourself? 
I'll, I'll go down there. Okay, that's my thought. That's my thought. And the other two, are you guys approaching as well? Yeah. I mean, you can't let one go into an unknown situation that might involve worshippers of Lady Arafat. <laughs> yeah. did, Neil, did you heal any um, attribute damage stuff from your rest? I would have done, but I don't know how much you it's, heal overnight. It's one a day uh, for each day of travel, and if you spend an entire day in town, it's two. So I've healed a fat old one. Mm -mm. You traveling back from that place alone? Oh, you teleported. Huh, teleported. One. Yeah. And how much health, health do I heal my level of, right? Um, I heal my level. I know I do. Um, yeah, exactly that. Yep. Okay, cool. So um, you guys are all traveling down to the uh, to the outer rim of, of Kurzweil. It's not like you guys have walls and a border or anything like that, right? And when you go down there, you can actually see Kithil literally has soldiers lined up. He's called as many men to arms as he can, and has them line up and spread up, spread wide. They're only one man deep, you know what I mean, so they could spread out as much of the area as possible. And they're trying to keep the influx of people down to a low. But literally, as you're traveling there, just as you're riding from your castle to where it is that Kithil is handling this, you can already see unfamiliar faces um, uh, inside your city. Like you can tell they're unfamiliar by like. They clearly have dirty clothes. That they just came from uh, the walk. They're wearing uh, clothing that's not necessarily typical for the people that live here. It kind of comes off as I don't think these these must be travelers or visitors. And then you see like more and more, and they're kind of like slinking in and through the town. And you realize, oh, people are already inside the town. And then you get over to where Kithel is. Like I said, one man deep, as wide as you can spread them, trying to hold as many people back from just coming into your town as possible. Immediately as you're approaching Kithwell and how he's trying to handle the situation, as you're approaching, you also happen to have um, uh, General Vo General Yarvin uh, is over there. Sorry, General Yeager is over there as well. Yarvin? Um, I don't know why I thought Yarvin. Is that the name of a town in here? Uh, they're, a, they're a race of humans in Yavaska. Oh, are they? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think, I think I know the name Yarvin from something else. But anyways, so uh, from uh, Gen General Yeager... Um, <clears throat> my apologies, is also kind of like approaching as well, not directly next to you guys, it's not like he can chat with you, but you see him coming in. As you guys are approaching, each of you can make me a quick intelligence check. Uh, okay, I, I would also, given Music. what's been happening in the past, I would have this on pretty much this entire time, seeing if anyone trying to get in has uh, magic on them gotcha, and gotcha. intelligence. To one up me, didn't you, Tash? <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm waiting for one to roll a 23. No, he, he rolled a seven. <laughs> he rolled right. first. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's up there. Yeah. yeah. So, so one, uh, you're kind of more fixated on the situation. So you just see like a wave of people coming towards your city. You see um, uh, how it is a Kithel's handling the scenario, so on and so forth. And it's kind of like what you're fixated on. However, the other two who are able to kind of like step back from the action a little bit more and kind of like take in the scenario, you can see that it's seriously about four or five hundred people which are coming into your town all at once. And in case you don't remember, it's not exactly like your town is huge. You don't have like an endless supply. Like 500 people coming into your town is a ginormous change from what you usually uh, have going on there. I'm actually looking up your population as we speak. 2775. Yeah, that's actual curse yeah. Well, so that's it's, the it's, uh, that's big Oh, yeah, yeah. So, change. Curse Falls is 2,000. 2, so, that's 25% of your population just kind of like more or less trying to read in. That's what you see approximately that, that uh, Kithil is holding back. Nevermind was already slipped past the lines. No magic was detected in the people slipping behind. What do you guys do? Uh, I give a very worried look to Rayron, <laughs> realizing what's happening. And pass the buck. Uh, no, no, what, um, I, I, it'd be what he would do, like, just like, uh, mm -hmm. what, <laughs> what did we get from the intelligence check, sorry? Just there are uh, like an estimate of the people, people. Mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. that was... <sighs> fuck. Um, so in a group this size, you would naturally have, uh, leaders, people guiding, say, come on, come on, yeah. Uh, Rayron would uh, be on horseback, therefore he's higher than everyone. He finds it easier to pick someone. He would trot up to them and say, You, where is it that you and your people hail from? So the people that you have there, 
Um, uh, they're the mixed group that you see. It's not like everybody's docile and sitting back. I'm like, oh, we're stopping here now? Oh, okay. We have, there are clearly people on the outer perimeters that are like tr clearly trying to run around. Like a random guard will go chasing after this group of like six people that are trying to like run past. Like, oh, get back here! Which of course then shortens the line a little bit and makes it so it kind of becomes this thing where guards now running off and Kithil's trying to keep them together but the people are realizing that they can kind of make their way around and, and, and whatnot and trying to filter their way into your... Into <laughs> yell your order. Of course. I want to use rallying cry to yell order. Like Beautiful. just... The, with that uh, weird sort of ethereal, not my voice voice that's really loud. Um, uh, Neil, and to finish uh, uh, the description to you, they are, uh, so that's what you see kind of like on the border. Uh, on the inner part, there are people that are either, again, docile and just kind of like, okay, let's figure things out. We understand that we're just kind of like coming into your side. And there are people that are like, hey, you have to let us in. You know, and, and they, they're kind of like shouting for like, you know, um, um, you are, you're welcoming of people. You have to let us in. It's cold out here. It's winter. You know, other people are like, save us. You have to save us. You know, and, and, and so on. So there's a whole bunch of, there's mix going on. It's not like this group is all doing one thing. Now, you're going up and you're trying to get somebody's attention. And overall, they're mostly kind of, you know, not ignoring you, but everybody's kind of going about their own business. And so they acknowledge the fact that you're there, but aren't really listening. And then with this like loud, almost ethereal voice, you have uh, Valor in behind you, kind of like, order, order, you know, just trying to call attention. And those that are a little bit more um, willing to kind of work with you, whether if they're being aggressive, but not overly so, or they are docile, they'll kind of like start pulling their attention to the three that arrived on horses. And then you can kind of like see clicking in their minds, oh, we think we know who they are. And then, uh, uh, Ray, and you can kind of kick in from there. Uh, so <clears throat> once a slight bit of silence or calm has been called, he would uh, assess the situation, pick someone who's leading, guiding, suggesting for others, like, come on this way, or like, go, 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 or like, come on with me. Um, and he literally trots up to them uh, and... So, so a, a person that seems like on their side that seems like they're being uh, a little authoritative. Gotcha. Yep. Sense motive for me. Is that open to everybody? Um, uh, what? Just for him. I'm just waiting for it. I've done. Oh it. right, yeah. Oh uh, no! Is, it, is Roll Twenty still doing it's that? It's still thing? doing its thing. Uh, yeah. It was doing it on on uh, Monday as well. How are they not fixed this yet? There's such a huge did, website. Did that one? Did that one go through? That one it went. Did. Yeah. It went from a nine to a nineteen. So thanks for all time. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. But it, it's it's <laughs> like it, it's such a huge website with a lot of employees. There's no reason you think I don't. Fixed it by I now, was surprised yeah. it it lasted a week, let alone. It's like when, you're, when your cable cuts out and you're like, <laughs> hey, I pay you like $200 a month for this cable. And they're like, yeah, cool, but we'll send a technician in a week. You're like, excuse me? <laughs> what? Um, so anyways, you uh, with your 19, you easily are able to kind of pick out somebody that seems like they're a bit of a leader. Um, you don't necessarily know everybody. Everybody knows them. But they definitely have a bit of a force of personality. Somebody that you think... Given the right scenario, might be able to rise to the occasion. So um, you go up, walking up to them, and he asks, um, <clears throat> "Where is it you and your people hail from?" Um, <clears throat> they. Uh, my apologies. You say, "Where is it you and your people hail from?" Correct. Okay. They say, um, "Well, we come from Hard Gwen, but not exactly." Um, we we come from uh, just out outside of Hot Gwen, one of the um, uh, towns that are that are outside of it that are technically considered uh, Hot Gwen, um, and well, we came running as as quickly as we we could to get here. Why? I um. I'll try to describe it as best I can, and, and please understand that it's just because I don't... It's like wax. It's like 
like wax. Do you know what I mean by that? No. So speak plainly, please. I'm being as plain as I could, like wax that moves, like wax. Are you referring to the slime that travels across the surface of your water? Because you have just told me so far, it is like wax. No, like, like a big glob of wax, like, like the size of a person if they were melted like wax all up and down the river and scooping stuff out of the river. Uh, dozens of them, more, scores of them. And when people went to go check it out, they attacked the people and, well, devoured them. It's like wax. I see. I don't know how to describe it any differently. And you think back for a second, Rayrin. Yeah, what I know what I know what these are. Huh? I know. I'm. I got a plus three in t mod. I can recall these are little demon boys. Demon <laughs> or devil? Same difference. It's a, you, it's a good thing you broke away to ask these questions. I was about to say I'm probably going to be talking to someone about setting up some sort of makeshift shelters and shit. What? What was your name for me? NPC 72. NPC 72, I need your help. I need you to gather your people outside the city. We will do our best to aid you, but you must be allowed into the city in an organized manner. I would like for you to form a camp outside of the city for now. We will provide for you shelter and food, and we will process you as you enter the city. Do you understand me? If all of your people come in now, we will not be able to support you. It's cold out here. It's cold in here. Uh, can we at least have materials for warmth, blankets, tents? Yes, I will see to it. Uh, I am not looking either. back at the people around that are listening, and you can just see, like, listening in on this one second, Tesh, sorry. If you see the people yep. that are listening in on this, some of them are like, they're willing to take us. Oh, thank the gods. You know what I mean? And some of them are like, those fuckers, they're trying to hold us. They're just going to let us freeze out here. You can again get that like mixed kind of you know reaction amongst them. Uh, I can't. Uh, briefly, I can't find the, the kingdom thing that gives us a list of who do, who's got what jobs. But I would be talking to someone already about getting supply, like just basic supplies, setting up uh, like as basic sort of uh, protection as we can. And if needed, I will help start bonfires, if needed. <laughs> yeah, one was going to order the nearest soldiers to uh, start building pyres. We'll, we'll get... A I think if we get, if, if we get Jaeger to take control of the situation, he can... What, what we want him to do is generate a small military camp outside of the city. Yep. Like, I mean right outside of the city. Yeah. Sure. Um... Rayron would send soldiers, like like you say, we'd speak to the soldiers and we'd say, go find General Jaeger, inform him of the situation and tell him that we need him to erect a military camp outside of the city okay. for these refugees. And of course, he'll do exactly what you're asking. He'll do, he'll do that. And um, more or less, he'll turn to you and say, I would like to divert some of the uh, assets that we have in the city to make this work well. If we want to actually process these people well and and have them not sneaking through our borders, I, I have a, a, a suggestion. We need to make them feel like in this camp that we're making for them, that they're going to be guarded, they're going to feel safe. I suggest at the very least we put up small walls for them, um, uh, sharpened pikes and the like. Um, can we divert some of the, the lumberjacks? Uh, chopping the wood, have those brought to us over here. Can we... Uh, build this camp over off to the side. Build it properly. Um, uh, uh, Valron would be in on this conversation because uh, he would he would have been trying to figure out who to talk to when Rayron figured out who to talk to. <laughs> uh, uh, he would give Rayron a look and be like, "That sounds like a good idea." Like Agreed. sort of saying, but also sort of questioning, like just because he does he this part of war he doesn't know. He knows about the other part of war. He doesn't know about this part of war. <laughs> yeah, he only knows about the winning part because, you know, 
You are Perrin. <laughs> wow. Perrin only record that shit. <laughs> like that's that's the thing. <laughs> that's what it, that's part of what he hated about like, Perrin was they only recorded that we shit. We are the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, this is great. I love me. <laughs> They're basically Americans. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> right? Like, what? Nagasaki? Uh, they deserved it, right? I mean, come oh, on. Oh That's, my what, God. Do, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of innocent <laughs> non combatants? We're awesome. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, anyway. I know. It's terrible. It's terrible. Oh. So, anyways. Um, um, turns to you both and he says, um,. I don't know what our food stores are like, but this could be a problem. Uh, Tally is here. I might uh, speak to her and see what Reed's reserves are like. See if we can get some food brought here. This will be a problem no matter what. A town like Reed wouldn't really be able to do that much, I think. At the end of the day, we might have to ask for help if it from one takes, of the uh, Yeah, If it takes any stress off at all, though, I'd, I'd say you should probably contact your uh, people in was it Lashev? Agreed. Jaeger actually chimes in and says I'll be honest oh with you. Oh my god he got here quick. Jaeger was speaking with you the entire time. We, we were literally just talking to him. He's like hello I'm here. <laughs> Somebody need a Snickers. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry see he's he goes um uh, every time I think of a Snickers bar, I always think of that um, uh, Brady Bunch family with the guy from Machete commercial. The Marshall, Mar no, if you haven't seen the commercial, I'm say, sorry. But the other thing, these people got here fast. I just opened up the map and I was just like, "Oh right, yeah, it's a fucking long way." So, 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 um, the just well, didn't stop running. Yeah, the, these also <laughs> these also weren't the people from inside Hog. <laughs> they were all just Terminator running. <laughs> but, but he actually says to you, uh, generally, you will say. Honestly, one, that's probably an excellent... You see, the reason why I'm suggesting building of a camp for them, walls make them feel secure, is because I honestly don't think this is the end. I think this is the beginning. As the tides of war turn, and they realize that we're more of saviors rather than oppressors, they're going to turn to us. They're going to come to us for shelter, to hide from the war, if they think that doing so is going to be safe for them. Having a place, a proxy, where we can process them through and not have everybody just spill in is, is brilliant. That's what you thought of. Having a more permanent one that can handle more than what's currently here is a better idea. While building a camp immediately outside of Kurzweil could work, it might work better if we had a different proxy. <coughs> Perhaps we could re use RID for this. Literally... It's not a bad idea divert lots of our soldiers, lots of our workers, and just start building up RID, put up some walls, and and make RID a secure place to take them in. It would be... They, it's a let's good idea. speak to Tally first before we start yes. putting people into her town. But yes, I agree that this is a good idea. It is It is definitely a thing that um, we, need to, we need to plan for, because as this war rages... I can only imagine what's going to happen. Indeed. But the 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 better we treat these uh, refugees, the more likely more will defect, which will be bad at first. But given how uh, taking any people away from Hardgorn is probably good for us in the long term. Um. <clears throat> You would actually have him turning to to uh, what's your name there, um, Rayward, and saying, um, <clears throat> uh, "Chosen." That's right. I was like, "Commander." No, uh, uh, chosen of the quill. Um, I know this is usually your area of expertise, but with all that's going on, we don't know how the state of Hard Gwen right now. We need eyes on the ground. Um, I know we have contacts that are looking into it for us. Perhaps we should reach out to those contacts or send a couple of our own men or even one of yourselves to see the situation of Hard Gwen. We need to know our enemy. I will return shortly. Uh, you two speak to Tally. I'm heading to the dungeons. 
We'll reconvene and say, well. Why are you heading to the dungeons? To speak to Lady Grayrus. As long as she remains in the dungeon. Well, actually, I thought, you know what? There's not enough people rampaging around the city <laughs> right now. Why not have a couple more? He he'd, uh, he he throws you a smile to show that he's joking and then turns grain and uh, sets him into a canter up towards the castle. Um, I think Valoran would just try and... Uh, Valoran would probably just try and be with these uh, <laughs> people and try and calm them down and... and assure them that things are happening to help them get, uh, deliver supplies if you can. And one would just head back to the castle to speak with Tony. Yeah. He, he, that's what he was hoping. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so I know one's going to uh, go to Tally. I know Ray Ren's going to go to Grey Rass. And uh, where were you going again, uh, Tesh? I'm I'm uh, staying with the, the refugees. So you're, you're going to be the, the, the site, obviously. Okay, cool. And you're actually Horth. Yeah. So it's probably a good thing because you actually have the gentlest touch. You can allow uh, Kithul and Jaeger to be kind of like the stronger hand and you to be the gentler touch. And, and kind of I, I would want to deliver like supplies and stuff if I can. I would also use, if needed to make a bonfire, I would use burning hands. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> you, you guys called? <laughs> that was our no, not like that. <laughs> that was everything we had. <laughs> I mean, it, it could be useful for like, hey, we want to build a bonfire here. We need dr like clean, like dry land. Burning hands. Okay, let's build one. <laughs> um, so, uh, so you're doing your your task uh, going about that way because yours is a much simpler. It's just a check from you, um, Tesh. Why don't you actually roll me um, a? And this is actually. Uh, Yours is a leadership role check um, because of well, your leadership. So um, you're actually going to roll me. What's, what modifier do you use? Is it plus three? So for your... Uh, okay, yep, yep. You're going to roll me um, with a 1d20 plus three for just kind of like your overall way of handling the situation. And then we're going to have um, Leon and Kithul uh, make their checks as well. For what they're doing. So first you roll. <laughs> God damn it. Beautiful. Um, and then uh... um, we're going to have uh, Leon be done by Neil. And then Kithel will be done by Jake. It's okay. My <clears throat> job was the one to fuck up. <laughs> Jake, would you like to go first or second? Second. Okay. Then Neil, you actually get to roll. Uh, are, are, are you ready for this? You actually get to Wait. roll 1d20 plus 5. Because Leon is... Is um, he's really good. Never Beautiful. Try. And then Kithel's one d twenty plus four. I'm trying. I'm just panicking. <laughs> it's fine. I gotta upgrade these boys this month. I'm excited about it. Oh jeez. So this is what the issue is. Ugh. Leon has a switch. He always behaves the same way. He always the same manners and so on and so forth. But he has a switch. He has his, his, his kind and considerate uh, way of handling people. And he has his aggressive way of handling people. He just has to flick a switch in his mind to be able to process what he needs to do and put emotion out of the, uh, to the side. He knows that if there is no order here, there will be no order. That too many people influxing onto your town will cause uh, irreparable damage and could uh, uh, completely upturn the stability of your of your city state forever, right? <clears throat> so yeah. he goes about it in an incredibly aggressive fashion. He tells everybody, "No lethality, but use force. You need to keep them at bay. You need to stop them from going in. They have to understand that there is order here. That is how we have to stop them from just uh, for, to have them respect our line and to to, to stay here." Now, Kithul is like. Grab people, detain them, hold them down, do the best you can, don't harm anybody, so on and so forth. And uh, what's his name there? Uh, Valorin is like, people, please listen to me. We're making you a warm space. We're going to let you in, but you have to allow us some time. I understand that it's cold out there, but you have to allow us time to make appropriate situation for you. And again, going back to, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, General Jaeger. If somebody goes trying to run past the line, 
with like a club or a blunt weapon, they will smash that person and bring them down because he's trying to maintain order. It's one of those unsavory things that it just has to be used to maintain yeah. the ba- boundary as of right now. And so that is what's happening to try to stop the influx. At the same time, orders are being done in the inside to start trying to prepare for this so you guys don't have to have this kind of scenario moving forward. Cool. All right. Um, uh, on the inside, Ooh, we actually wait. have... On anyone that is like really bad, like like as in like really struggling with the elements, I would cast this on them. Oh, cool! Yeah, yeah. this would be like like you can clearly see that because they ran like for more or less twenty four hours straight. They were nonstop, like traveling as fast as they could, hard as they could. And this isn't the end of the people. This is the people that made it in the first wave. You imagine there are people that are freezing coming up behind them. Like, yeah, if, the, if there are you know, people literally that like, 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 like a trouble, parent's yeah. clustering their young child, like stuff like that. Stuff like you that. would go and try to give salvation to the child and so on and so forth because, you know, they're the future, right? So I imagine that, again, you're very heartwarming. It's just people aren't really necessarily listening to you for the sake of order. They could just see the kindness. You know what I mean? All right, so going to the next two, uh, we'll actually have uh, you go next there, Jake. Uh, you're going to go and speak to um, uh, Tally, I think her name is. Yeah. Um, so you go and uh, approach her, and um, where, where? What room is she uh, currently residing in there, Jake? <laughs> uh, that's up to you, Scott. So she, she's, in a, those... she's in her own room. She's oh, an official okay. dignitary. Right. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. She has her own chambers. She'd be. She'd honestly be one of those uh, back towards, uh, probably towards the castle with others of. I want to say like nobility, but others of. of leadership right we'd be watching the situation from afar like oh my god so literally as you're riding up the stairs uh with with rayron rayron and you would probably give each other that nod and then rayron kind of like you know dismount at the top of the stairs go into the castle someone would take his horse to bring it off you would dismount to literally standing directly in front of you <clears throat> would be not only tally but also like uh arthur and because arthur's still around and edric Ar- arthur didn't leave did he yeah he didn't leave. no no so, but, uh, so Tally, Arthur, Edric, and a couple of others of, of note. But we should send Arthur down there, probably. Potent- well, Arthur's not from here, and I think you guys had plans of sending Arthur west. But we can handle that one afterwards, right? Yeah, yeah. I know, but, like, it's crisis. Oh, you mean to, to handle the situation as a... Uh, as what you Hold on one second. My, my father's calling me. I just want to double check something. That was okay. so weird. <laughs> just so random. Just yeah. like, hold on, my father is calling me. <laughs> yeah, that was, what, Scott, what I like. How are you? It didn't, it didn't even look like he looked at his phone. He was just like, no. hold on. <laughs> like yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like when you're like trying to get out of a conversation. Yeah. Like, ah, oh, I'm He's being like, called. Oh, oh, while you're about to speak, uh, well, um, phone call <laughs> uh-huh mm-hmm. I, uh, I, I gotta do, do take either this of you have a Man, link i need, I need the, all the time i can get i don't even know what i'm saying do either of you have a link to the the uh management thing that has all the lists of who's doing what job because i didn't need that for the longest time i lost the link i'm sending it to you i thought i bookmarked it but, but i am recommending I you 10 king points oh that's fair all right. Yeah, that's not bookmarks for some reason. Now it is. So, sorry about that. Um, my dad was the one that was over yesterday helping me build the walls. So, hey, we're talking about refugees and building walls. Woo! Um, so, anyways, uh, it's, it's, it's America bingo, right? Now we have to talk about his health care and, and, you know, sorry. So oh, that's um, coming. <laughs> Um, so anyways, you go to speak Valid to Tally. Care. She would be up at the top and you would literally, if one of those things I imagine as you dismount in Ray room, would go to, uh, w- give you the nod, go to walk in and turn back and look probably at, at Arthur and be like, go. <laughs> and he's like, yeah. And then, and then he would immediately just kind of like take the horse, your horse from the, the hand, cause Arthur's ballsy. We take the horse from the, the, um, hands of the guard that was just leading, uh, what's it, Sand or whatever his name is, Green, Green, Green. And uh, I keep thinking Sand because I think he had a, a horse from somewhere June. else. June. Dune, that's right, that's right. From Ah, from the Witcher campaign, that's right. So um, I would hop on the horse and would go riding your horse back down and into the uh, the area, leaving behind, again, persons of note, Tally and um, uh, and Edric. Edric wouldn't, Edric wouldn't be more of, I need to handle the financing uh, part of this. Yeah, God, no, you don't send Edric down there. He's like, 
Oh, I see we're clubbing people. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Oh, clubbing just people! Golf club someone around the face, and, and all the guards are like, What the fuck? And he's like, Are we not? Oh. <laughs> oh, whoops. <laughs> We're in Hard Glen. No, so, um, Charlie's there, and she looks at you, and she actually gives you, like, a legitimately concerned look. Like, like you can see, just by the look on her face, her heart is racing, and, like, she's kind of, like, scared. And like you, you, you can tell that she you, she doesn't know what's going on. Um, uh, roll me a, a sense motive before I kind of explain anymore. This is you, Jake. Jake the Snake. Hey, beautiful. She is Damn. she is scared because she legitimately thinks this is the war. You can tell she thinks that this is the battle happening. She thinks that war is here. <laughs> That's why the three of you rode down there, why only a couple of you rolled back, why the soldiers spread out and these people. Like, you can see that she's genuinely afraid. Like, oh my God, it's happening, it's happening, it's happening, it's happening now, it's happening now. Because while she's a, 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 a capable leader in the sense of running a, a, a quiet town like Rid, she's not prepared for war. That's not some, no training she's ever received. I mean, she's a capable person, and sure, with with uh, a bit of experience, but not right now. So, so she's kind of like at eleven as you're approaching her, Jake. Um. All right. Well, I'll get off my horse. Uh, I'd probably give it to give Adric the reins. Mm-hmm. Um. And then he just looks to Tally and says, puts his hand on his shoulder and says, "Oh, Tally, don't." This isn't the war, darling. Let's go inside. Oh. <laughs> uh, she's like, she, 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 you know, obviously very like, it's one of those things where you put your hand on her and you can almost feel, again, 26 cents motive. You can almost feel kind of like melting into it sort of a thing. I mean, she's like, she changes, her posture changes on like, like the micro level, right? Uh, but you can almost feel her kind of like easing and kind of like melting into the hands. And then she, she's like, yeah. Um, and then we'll turn and walk with you inside. After a couple of seconds of silence, kind of walking away and leaving behind uh, Edric and a couple of others having their conversation of what's happening, and Edric kind of already seeing the things that are happening, kind of, oh, geez. Um, uh, she'll start walking in with you and say, if it's not the war, then what is it? He just turns her and says, uh, people from uh, Hod Gwen, they're fleeing. They um, hear of all the good we do here, and uh, they have left en masse. Please, accompany me. Come with me to the map room. She uh, uh, does so. Um, again, kind of quietly. It's one of those she's processing it and uh, uh, taking in. Also, just trying to like control her breathing, allow her heart rate to come down. Obviously, she's you know she's a leader. She needs to present herself as such. Her her uh, like the gait and everything of her walk just kind of like calms down much more. Eventually, you guys go into the map room. It's just the two of you in there. Um, the seats in there, right? Oh, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bunch. Okay, I just motion for her to sit, and I take a seat, probably drag it directly across from her. Yep. And he says, um, "Tally, we've met several times now, and um, our towns have grown close. We trade together. We." Uh, we have that uh, fiendish plan you came up with um, for the spies in Hod Gwen. Uh, and, I, and I like to believe we have a good personal relationship as well. She, she smiles and says, I'd like to believe so as well. Uh, you're aware that our, our border is, uh, our lands extend right next to Reed. Yes. Um, look, I'm going to be blunt. The uh, We can't take in all of the refugees from Hod Gwen. And I was wondering, I think it might be time that maybe Reed joined Valorant. Of course, you would keep your position as mayor of Reed, as well as get to the uh, 
you would attain an ability title within Valorant. Uh, your lands will be, your farming lands uh, will be doubled and you will be our de facto leader in Reed. Now I need to station these refugees uh, and we would be pouring a considerable investment into improving the town, uh, its defenses, its resources. I just need, I really need you on board with this. Roll me a diplomacy check. And are you doing the intimidating diplomacy? I'd love to say that I am because I'm kind of like, yeah, we're, we're, you know, it's time to join the fold, but it wasn't really that intimidating, was it? It's entirely up to you how, how it is you want the delivery to be. Because um, your intimidating diplomacy works the way a regular diplomacy does. It's actually a nifty little trait that you have. <laughs> but describe, describe it to us so we can all see it in our mind's eye. Well, didn't I just describe what I said? No, the tone. The tone is, it's serious. Just the walls slam. He, he's also, whilst he's sort of stating this is what's going to happen, he's also giving her something in return. Like he's saying, you'll rise to nobility. You'll be our point person in Reed. You'll manage now, you know, a lot more than you have. You'll double your land. So yeah. like, yeah, I, don't know. I, I would say I would say it's a, more of a diplomacy, less of intimidate. Yeah, yeah. So would I. I'd love that auto twenty six, but like realistically. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, now, does this affect uh, the DC? As the last couple times I've rolled diplomacy on her, I've gotten like over twenty five both times. She's definitely fond of you. Okay, I don't want to roll. Low, but here we go. I believe. Boom. 23. Oh, it's funny. The, the, I, I clicked over and I was like, what? One? Oh, 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 sorry. Because I, I was on a different tab for a second. Um. So let's see. I'm just checking what the DC would be with the against 23. Because uh, the question is whether or not she's friendly or helpful. One could argue she's helpful, in which case the base DC is zero, but then you add their charisma modifier, and she actually does have a charisma, however that modifier is. However, then the diplomacy modifier is dependent on exactly what it is that you're asking for them. Um, asking of them. And you have a rather big ask. Um, and she's also getting things in return. So that should, you know. Is it that... <clears throat> Um, Don't worry, it's going to be a DC 20, you got this. Are you happy with your 23? Is there any other way that you can modify that there, sir? Well, I used the luck already, so no. I wasn't sure if there was anything else that you had. I honestly didn't know if it was in your little bag of, uh, um, of tricks as an Inquisitor. Uh, yeah, I mean, roll you can another retroactively let me um, drink a, a potion. <laughs> uh, I could still actually drink a potion. So. You probably would have on the way up, but you didn't say it. <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, it's, like, it's like, he's like, so maybe join the kingdom? And she's like, ah, and he's like, go, 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 please. <laughs> so, so you say it to her, and it's one of those things where she's like, you can see this conflict in her mind. You can see like she wants to uh, say yes. Oh, I will me a sense motive before I really kind of give away the whole cake here. Oh! Would you like to modify that 91 because it's not an auto failure? Um, you know her well enough that the DC is not crazy high, but it's when that you're happy with the 13. Uh, look, it's important. So. Yeah, do it. We we need. Oh my gosh! I love all that red. It's just a sea of red. Red, red, wild. Red um, is one's color. <laughs> all right. So, anyways, you um. Uh, See what I did there? That was a funny pun. Funny. <laughs> it was probably a bit complex for you, Scott. No, I was just not listening. I was doing something else. All right. So, anyways, you um uh you actually oh looking at her, you can tell that she wants to say yes to you. 
She wants to say yes to you. However, she knows that there is more than just her at stake here. There's the other people in the town as well, and whether or not they would accept it, and uh, and so on and so forth. You can see that she's on like the biting edge of saying yes, but there's like a conflict for her. She's not entirely sure if if this is the right decision, if it's a decision she could just make right now in a moment of uh, of high emotion, or if it's something that she needs to um, uh, really take time to, to think about. Farmers think, plan, plot, literally seasons in advance. They're not people that make snapshot decisions go, fuck it, we're doing peas this year. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's just, they have to kind of plot it, you know? And you can see kind of like that's her mentality. And so um, she's on, she like really wants to say yes. She can see her like in her eyes. She's like begging to just say yes, you know, for you. But but seeing that conflict, one's gonna try and and push her just a little bit more. He's gonna say, um, Tally, this this is important, and and you are the leader of Reed. Now, these people as well as my people, Valen, Rayron, and I, we really, we really need you. This, this could be a really big thing for Reed, for you. You are a leader and I, I, I need you. I need you now, Tally. <laughs> Wait, are you going that route? Um, that sounds joking. That's uh, why he pretty much. Uh, he, no, it wasn't. I wasn't joking. But he's pretty much just like, um, like they need you. We need you. The other two need you. And he says, I need you. We we need, we need to do this. So you're gonna try to use like your own personal connection as like as like a a, a little oomph here. Yeah, because well, seeing position. as she was on the edge, that's mm-hmm. giving it a little thrust in the right direction. Mate, why are you trying to make me roll charisma? Thanks. That's a that's not a good check for me. Hey, you could have gone good cop, bad cop. You could have been like, if you don't do this, your people will die. You know, like you could have oh gone, God. you could have gone intimidation, dude. <laughs> <laughs> really, charisma? There's nothing else. That charisma is how it is. You alert people. You know, right? I believe. I believe uh, in I believe you, it's Jake. Diplomacy, but just roll, roll a fat one, twenty. One, one. Eight, there you go. Bam. And Nailed I, it. Are you satisfied? Oh, he does that. Oh, he used three luck on one thing. Hey, listen. She, um, she listens to what you say. I mean, like, and then I need you. And then there's like moment where like her eyes, she's kind of like thinking. She was looking at you. But you know, people like look at you, but they're clearly like other stuff in the back of their mind, almost like they're looking through you. Like they're listening, but not quite listening. Like every conversation I have with Neil, I don't really listen. And then, um, <laughs> And then there was that moment where, like, all of a sudden you can see, like, her eyes, like, focus to your eyes. Like, you actually, like, meet gaze and you see that. And you can see her eyes start to well up. She doesn't want to say anything because at the same time she doesn't exactly know exactly what it is that you're that you're. He would put his means. hand on her hand just while her eyes are welling up and he'd be like, it's okay. Oh, oh. Um, one person sacrifices thousands of souls and the other one... Don't worry, one's been watching Ray Run. He knows what's, what goes on. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, that's amazing. Um, and so, so, like I said, like her eyes well up um, and then you can see when she says that, like... There's like a, a moment, like a few moments of pause while like it's like literally the moment still, like she's like savoring the moment. And then kind of like as she like takes it in and uh, kind of like throws her shoulders back and then yes, as as the ruler of Rid, as their appointed leader, I think that the union between Rid and, and Kurzweil and, and all of Valorin um, is the wise decision. If that's the case, then we'll discuss titles and whatnot and... In the future, let's start making the appropriate plans now. There's a war to face, and let's face it, we're not going to succeed if we don't band together. I agree. We should do this. So he has a hand, he says, thank you, Tally. And he um, leans in, gives her a hug, and then cuts to Rayron. Okay. That table's about to get messed. No. Um, Rayron. 
So uh, you go walking in uh, through the chamber, as I had said. He, he kind of stopped to talk to Tally for a second. And what ended up happening is you walked in through the chamber. And about eight or ten seconds after you walked in through the chamber, there was a swooping through the air. And the raven that was kind of flying overhead outside overseeing things lands on your shoulder as you're walking across your throne room, like coming to the doorway out of your throne room where you'd go downstairs, where there was once a tree. But there isn't. Now there's a woman and a man being guarded. Um, and lands on your shoulder. And as it lands on your shoulder, it's like, ah! and um, oh, whatever noise ravens make. And uh, there's a it's few. It's more like a raw. Ah! 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 Oh, no. I'm so sorry. Um, so you, uh, it, it lands on your shoulder. And there's a few. You know, there's like probably a good 10, 12 second period where nobody would hear a whispered conversation if you care to engage in one. But it doesn't say anything other than that screech to you. Well, this isn't exactly ideal. Um, uh, it just kind of ruffles its feathers a little bit. <sighs> That's it. He continues on, continues on his way down. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm just, sorry we're, I just got some fairly it, it, bad messages. So can you repeat what just... Got, you good? Um, Tess, you good? Yeah, I'll, I'll be fine. Yeah. Okay, okay. Short version, bird landed on his shoulder. He's like, this is a bad time. And the bird just kind of ruffled its feathers for a second, but stayed on his shoulder. The raven. Oh, no, he wasn't telling it to go away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so, um, uh, and you go walking down the stairs. Let's just say anything else. Walking down the stairs is the guard there. The guard uh, nods and kind of like, you know, when you walk towards the cell that is hers, he, walk, he kind of leads in front of you, unlocks the cell and allows you in. You can see that she is in there. Um, she's in there not alone. There's another guard that's standing inside the cell as well. I uh, just kind of like sitting there and, and not, not guard, sorry, um, scribe that's in there uh, working alongside with her. There's lots of lighting inside uh, uh, the room that she's in right now. Um, Torchlight and whatever that's down there. And they're kind of, as you come walking in, there's literally like a chuckle that you hear happening. It's like you hear chuckle as the thing click and opens. And the chuckle subsides pretty quickly. And, um, as you come walking in and they both looking up at you, clearly having heard the clink in the door opening. Um, uh, she looks up at you and, and she stands up. It takes her a, a moment to stand because, you know, she's older. But she stands up as does the um, uh, the scribe. He'd wave the scribe away and then say, Lady Greyress. Uh, he, he would bow and immediately turn and walk out. And she would say, um, Chosen of the Quill, to what do I owe this pleasure? I trust your studies are going well in fact they are um uh, the scribe that you sent away um uh kyle there um npc 74 uh there um, <laughs> i love that kyle <laughs> name tesh tesh uh te oh my god tesh no, has been a wonderful aid. no he actually went ahead and uh he went ahead and, oh he's a good boy we veto this. <laughs> no, he's a really good boy. He's been very helpful. <laughs> no, <it's> like, <laughs> get, get, <laughs> no okay, so please no. <laughs> Ka, uh, Kyle, there, he actually went and um, uh, collected an, um, uh, a clean tome for us to write all of our findings in. And she'll actually take the page, like the cover's already open, kind of like flip through. You can see there's already like a solid, like, I don't know, 50 pages or so filled in of notes of other stuff that she's been collecting out of, other, uh, out of like the, around there. She says, I don't know how quickly you hope to have everything done, but we've certainly been working, you know, as long as he's down here and as long as I have the books, as much as possible to get these works done for you. Excellent. I'm pleased to hear that things are progressing well. You're comfortable? Um, as comfortable as could be. Good. Things are progressing at a pace, and I am having a rather trying time at the moment. Me and or others among the leadership here will probably be traveling to Hout Gwen. We will need to assess the situation. We may well need access to the city. I would like some information regarding that. What would you like? Safest route in. Who we can bribe. Who you can't bribe. Who will turn a blind eye. Who not to go near. Hmm. 
if we do decide to enter the city, we might also need a safe place to stay. I would also like you to correspond with your agents within the city. I would like you to make sure that they begin gently spreading the rumors that the water crisis is fading. When are you leaving? Not entirely certain yet. Probably on the morrow. Maybe a couple of days. May I have some requests to fulfill your your needs? You may request. Instead of just <clears throat> um, instead of just Kyle, can I have a few more scribes? Uh, people that are capable, quick read, can skim well, um, uh, help me find what I need so I can transcribe the notes over for you. Um, and can I have the names of everybody that are, that's going to be going? If not their real names, then the names that they're going to be using, um, uh, what they look like, and, and so on, so I can draft together an appropriate message to send out in that direction. Is the war started? Not just yet, but not too long either, I fear. Very well, I will get to you the names that we will be traveling under, um, and I will see about getting you some extra help. Um, perhaps we will leave a day or so later to allow you time to complete this. I imagine you want the messages sent to Hod Gwen to be in advance of, in advance of your arrival, so... Um, the sooner I have the rest of my information put together, the sooner I can draft that note and a runner can be sent. Very well. Please let me know if there's anything else I could do. And I imagine that all other aspects of our bargain are still underway. Indeed, they are. We have found some information about his position. However... We've yet to ascertain how it's changed in the absence of Lord and Lady Greyrass. Nods. That is, if your actual absence ever gets out. I'm sure it's known. It's been a while. Well, yes, but you did live in a cave. No. We visited from time to time for the sake of running the business. We didn't live there. It was less than a day's travel from, from our home. So Very well. stopping in for maybe two days at most and then leaving. Um, being down inside dark, dank areas is not very good for the health of an old person's lungs. Should this go well, then perhaps we shall see about finding you some more appropriate accommodation with access to open air. It's very generous of you to think of something like that. I hope I can satisfy what it is that you need so that we can progress our relationship. As do I. He'd turn around and motion for the, scroll to, uh, the scribe to go back in. I am, Anno. I am referring to myself. Ugh. Hacking up a lung every time I have to go do work in that goddamn room. Um, and so you go to find the scribes and so on and so forth. Okay. Beautiful. Are you wearing like a mask in that room? When I do work? If I'm spraying poisons or working with uh, fiberglass, I wear an actual respirator. So like the yeah. quality stuff. It's not easy to breathe, but when, if, when I'm just doing like drywall and I'm just inhaling lots and lots of, you know, uh, uh, fine plaster powder. Eh. <laughs> you, know? you should probably just wear like just a, a normal mask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, to like filter a filter out. Mask. Yeah, Articulate. I, I have like the super flimsy ones and I have like a dust mask which has like a little thing like right here that has a thing pinches on your nose like a, a quality dust mask and then I also have the respirator but I'm like if I don't need the respirator I probably don't need a mask <laughs> does that sound right? no? Uh, no no no? okay um, <laughs> moving on so we uh, uh, the three of you kind of went your different directions did your, your various different tasks and, and you got working on it I imagine that evening, after a lot of stuff is worked on, you're going to have to eventually pull together and have a conversation with one another. The big question is, are you going to do that um, uh, with 
your your uh, other leaders involved, like say Tally and Jaeger and Kithel, or are you going to just have a meeting with just the three of you? Definitely the three of us, but then after that meeting, we'd have to have a meeting with yeah. Jaeger and Tally and. So you're gonna do yourselves Anna. first, and then the others afterwards. Yeah. Beautiful. So why don't we have the three of you come together after this short break? We'll be oh, uh, God. back in a moment. Uh, everybody relax for a second. Go uh, get a coffee, drink a tea, have a cigarette, um, maybe get Go late. to the loo. All right. Okay. Yeah, of course. Good. We'll be back. Scott, everybody.